Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? We're having technical difficulties today. Not certain which part of the world is causing me issues, but um, we're doing that. The computer just gave me a restart and messed up over there, and apparently the cat wants to play today. So it's going to be one of those days. It'll just be fun, won't it? Okay. So we are going to make the ten or. The two bottle wine tote. It's from a company called the Folk Art Factory and it is a pattern that you have to purchase. Uh, I don't remember. I didn't look it up again this morning. I want to say it was six dollars but I'm not a hundred percent certain. The link is in the description so you can go there. Um, I am adding feet to the bottom of the bag because you know, I love feet. just love feet. Um, and I'm not using the leather uh, on the zipper pull. I purchased different zipper pulls. But other than that, I am following along with the idea of what they've done here. Um, I won't be cutting the bias on the bias also. And I say that, and if I do it once and it doesn't work for me, then I will on the future ones. But I've made this bag once before. I made it incorrectly but I did make it. Um, and I didn't use canvas. This, uh, the, the fabric I've, used, I've purchased for the exterior is a um, waterproof canvas. And I put the three pieces in the wrong order because they list them oddly in the cut area. So when you cut them, um, they're in a different order. Typically, if you cut something, typically when they, when they make a cut list, it's top, middle, bottom. And they do their cut list um, middle, top, base. Just to, like I said. So I messed it up when I made it. I, I did it in the wrong order. Now all the pieces for this bag fit in this box. Um, I'm just going to put that there, but obviously someone is joining us. And the items I have in this box are $181 and some odd cents. Um, with the product that I currently have, the most I can possibly make is four. Um, so after that, if I want to make more, I will need to purchase more product. FYI, I am planning on selling these for $20. Uh, we have a monthly wine club here in our neighborhood where we bring one bottle of wine and a $5 bill. And then one person hosts and they provide like cheeses or chips or, you know, charcuterie boards, whatever is going on. And they, get, they gather, the, they get the cash and the two bottles of wine then we all get to drink from each of the bottles of wine that we bring. So that's why I needed a two bottle wine bag, which was challenging to find. Um, there were a lot of them made out of neoprene, which, and they were only like $10, $12. They weren't that very expensive, but they were just ugly. I mean, it's neoprene. It's, you know, it's not like something, Taking it to the beach would be fine. It's a beach thing, but to take it somewhere where we're all gathering and we all, yeah, I just didn't like it. So, this is what I ended up doing. I ended up making my own, and now I am going to make more and attempt to sell them to the other people in my wine group. Um, at this point, I haven't found a break-even point, uh, but part of that is because the leather I bought is over the top. I didn't need nearly as much as I have, but I specifically wanted a burgundy leather, and the only way I could find it online was I could either buy a, a eight and a half by eleven piece, or I could buy this. So that's what I went with. All right, 
So let's get started with what we have going on here. I guess this is kind of like an unboxing. I didn't even think about that. All right, so the first thing is our exterior fabric. And I did purchase waterproof canvas, and I got two yards of it. So it was 30 some odd dollars for the two yards. Um, but it has wine bottles on it. Now the wine bottles are kind of big for the size of this bag, so we're going to have to see how that works out. It may end up looking really stupid, and I may be very upset with myself for spending money on something with such a big pattern on it, but we'll find out. So that's my exterior fabric. My interior fabric, I went with a, what did they call this? Is this an ivory? It is an ivory. Kona cotton, so standard type in Kona cotton. Um, from what I've been, sorry, and I should have mentioned this, I should back up. So this, I believe I should be able to get at least seven bags from. So 30 odd dollars, seven bags. Um, if it was just an inch because it's I got about two yards which is 72 inches if it was 73 and a half inches wide I can get nine bags out of it so depending on how this was cut whether it was cut by a machine which means it's exact 72 no give or if it was cut manually um, it's possible that I got some extra out of it and I may be able to get more bags but as of now I know with absolute certainty I can get seven bags out of this. I did the math. I drew out layouts and everything. So I know I can get seven bags guaranteed out of this. Maybe eight, but I don't think so. All right, cone of cotton. Again, two yards. Um, but this needs more fabric. This has a the, the front and the back of the bag, and then we are going to box the corners. This has a front, a back, and a divider down the middle because this is going to have a padded divider so the two bottles don't clank together. Lovely feature of this bag. Um, so this has a little bit more fabric in it and I'm not certain if I, how many I can get. From what I can tell, it looks like I can get six, potentially, but sometimes the math fails me. All right, zipper tape. It comes with zipper pulls. Where are my zipper pulls? Here they are. All right. So, 10 yards of zipper tape. And I think I've used some of this, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, I've never used the zipper pulls, so maybe not. I will not be using the zipper pulls that came with the zipper tape. They are brown. They match. All is right with the world. Um, if I wanted to, I could, and then I could use the leather as the decoration as the zipper pull, but no. Instead of these, I purchased zipper pulls. There are 30 of them here. I don't have enough fabric to make 30 bags, but I have enough zipper tape. I think the zipper tape was enough to make 20 or 30 bags. because so I only need four and a half inches. Um, the math is on my computer screen, which is dead right now, which is why I don't have the paper in front of me to give you the exact numbers. Um, but the zipper pulls, I have 30 of, and then the zipper tape, like I said, uh, five yards, 10 yards, Damn, can't remember, I meant to have paper standing in front of me, either way, only need four and a half inches. All right, I have feet. These are different feet than I normally use. These actually screw on, so that'll be interesting to see how that works. And I did buy some little washers to go in there to uh, just put on one side to make sure they don't tear through the fabric after I do it. So those are the bag feet. I bought an entire kit of snaps. The reason I bought the whole kit was because I really wanted antique brass. I think the antique brass is going to look really nice with the color of the bag. And I couldn't find just antique brass. So I bought a whole kit. Um, kit was like $30. I'm only going to be able to use 30 sets, but that's still 30 bags I can get out of this, and then I can use the snaps somewhere else. All right. Fusible fleece. I did buy fusible fleece. You know, a lot of times I don't buy the fusible fleece. I just use batting, but I went ahead for the first 
I think I can get four out of this um, just to see what the cost difference might be. Um, from what I can tell, it's going to be, this is going to be like double if I had just purchased batting. Um, but we'll go ahead and since I already did it, we'll go that route. Um, here is my leather. All this is is an accent on, oh, I guess I should do that first, straps. Bought 10 yards of webbing. Uh, calls for two strips of 23 inch long, one and a quarter inch webbing. So that's what this is, and it's cotton. So everything but the fusible fleece and the leather. So bag's not really going to be washable because of the leather. But the outside is waterproof, water resistant canvas, so it should be okay. Alright, so the, the leather straps, and then you take, I guess I should have tried opening this before I got you all here. Come on. There's a box and a cat. You know the two things have to come together at some point. Alright, there's a piece of tape on the bag. Okay, and then I have burgundy leather, and it only needs to be one inch wide because the straps are one and a quarter, and it's just going to be a decoration on the strap. So the strap's one and a quarter inches wide. This is, we're going to cut one inch wide and like 12 inches long. So not very long. I can get 162 bags out of this leather. That's a lot of bags. I'm not making that many bags. I'm going to guess that at some point you will see me use this for a wallet or something small like that because I just haven't decided what to do. Last but not least, in the box, other than the cat, is our so all 100% polyester brown cotton or 100% polyester thread um, standard everyday brown thread I got brown because I want it to be highlighted when I do the top stitching on the bag I want to be able to see the top stitching I want to see that detail so I went ahead and got brown I figure I can get five bags out of this maybe seven we'll find out and I have also used this at some point before because I have a bobbin in there so it's been used before all right so the first thing we're going to do is get the cat off of the table because we don't need the cat to make the bag so oops there we go and we're going to take the cat off to the side there we go, key cat. Okay. She is off to the side, which means she will probably come back soon. I'm going to check my volume. How are we working? How are we working? All right, we're doing fine. So my microphone's not working either. So it's on here, but it's doing me absolutely no good. So you're hearing me through one of the cameras. And again, I'm not certain which camera because when I was playing with them, they were all being fussy too. So. Technical problems all over the place today. Okay, first thing we need to do is follow our cut list. Same thing we always do. And I put it in the binder and put it in little things because I'm going to make a bunch of them. So I just want to make sure I have everything all together. Let's get the tape out of the way so we can use. Oh, and by the way, this is fake leather. This is not real leather. You can use whatever version of leather you want. Um, uh, actually, on the last bag, I did not use leather at all. Um, I used the same fabric that I used on the exterior, which happened to be your back. Um, something I didn't have to put an edging on. It was a uh, an exterior fabric of some kind and this is not working for me so we're going to set this off to the side all right 
You need to go. Find somewhere to sit that isn't right here. And that's fine. If you want to sit there, go for it. You just can't be right in front of me. Alright. Have everything off to the side and ready to go. Now, one thing you need to know about leather or about canvas is that it frays. And I left my water. Yes, I did. It's right here. All right. So canvas does fray. Um, when you use it, the area where you cut it, you need to be careful that you don't pull it all out or you're never going to have enough. This is all made with quarter inch seams. So that's fine. Um, if you want to cut it bigger so that you have more seams, go for it. Uh, the other thing you might consider doing is if you have a serger, serging all the edges. Uh, I've seen many people do that. I don't find that I want to waste the time, which could turn out to be a problem at some point because it could be that my bag frays so much that I'm unable to use it. But right now I'm just, I go with, I've never had a problem personally. So at this point I'm happy with it not being done. Uh, if you have just a regular sewing machine, you can uh, do a zigzag on the edge and finish it off also. And that keeps it from fraying too much. Both of those items are things you can do. Okay, from the outer canvas, we are gonna cut two pieces, 10 and a half inches wide, a whole bunch of different things. What I did was I figured out last night that salvage to salvage, I need two 10 and a half inch wide strips and one one and a half inch wide strip. And that should get me three bags and two bindings. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do the strips and get started that way. I know. You keep an eye on that for me, babe. So the first thing I need to do is figure out which way I want to cut it. And actually it turns out it's not going to be salvage to salvage. because the wine bottles go that way. So I need 10 and a half inches that way. This is my salvage. My wine bottles go up and down, not side to side. So I have 72 inches and it looks like it's a machine done. It's machine done. Um, it's actually printed 72 inches. So I, now this just messes up everything I have done, all the math I did last night. Because I didn't pull it out of the box. I thought I knew what I was thinking. Okay. So this is 36, oh, it is, it's, yeah, 36. 36 inches. And I have to do it, I have to cut it the way I'm thinking, otherwise my bottles will be sideways and that won't work for me. So I have to cut this way. No, no, you stay right over there. I told you you had to stay put. You're good baby, but you have to stay put. Let's see, how are we going to do this? Stay. No. Go in your little box or stay on the ironing board. So, 
So, see, I had this all planned and didn't work out for me. Let's just get rid of the salvage first. And then I'm going to cut it 11 inches wide. So I'm definitely not going to be getting nine bags out of this. So salvage. Double ruler, we're going to put this out 11 inches. Now we have a much smaller piece to work with, and that makes life a little bit easier. So, the first piece I need, I need two pieces that are ten and a half inches wide by seven and three quarters inches tall. Let's cut off our unfinished fabric. I'm going to line this up here. Let's get this over here. How's that look? So first I'm going to cut off the, the extra white fabric, by, but I'm going to line up on this straight edge that we just cut so we get nice and square. And I need it to be seven and three quarters inches tall. And neither of these rulers is going to give me that by itself. So I need two rulers. So seven and three quarters. Why does that look like it's angled? That's not straight at all. I know I lined it up straight. Let's try this again. There we go. Seven and three quarters inches. So I line up I line up my ruler at seven and three quarters on the cut edge. I take my other ruler and I line it up at the top. And there we go. So we have one. This piece is seven and three quarters inches tall, but I need it to be ten and a half inches wide. 
and it's too it's wider than that right now and I didn't get all of the salvage off the edge so ten and a half And our little ruler and you can see it's just about a half an inch well you can't necessarily there down up here it's just about a half an inch okay so we have our first piece and this is the front and back middle panel. So this is going to go in the middle of the bag. That's one. Now we need a second one. Seven and three quarters inches. line it up all right shift everything over that's two and now ten and a half I don't know if you can see it, but it's already starting to fray on the top. And it's only been used just a little bit. Line everything up, make sure we're square. And our second piece. Okay. We're going to go this way. Because this is being challenging today. Again, just having technology issues all the way around. Okay, now, the next piece it says to cut is two and three quarters inches wide by ten and a half inches long for the front and back top panels. So what confuses me about this is if it's two and three quarters inches wide, it's like it's sideways. So I'm going to leave the ten and a half as going this way, and I'm going to do the two and three quarters this way. For the two and three quarters, I don't need two rulers. I have one ruler that's wide enough. So, two and three quarters. And two and three quarters. And there's a lot of fat right there. Okay, then I'm going to line these up so that the edge is all nice and straight. and a half inches across. That's only nine and a half. Measure twice, cut once. If you've seen my other shows, you've seen me do it live on camera where I cut the wrong size. So these are the top pieces. And 
the next thing is 10 and a half inches by four and a half inches for the front and back base panels. Four and a half inches wide. This ruler is not wide enough, but that one is. inches wide. Oh, that's not right. It's too wide. It's too long. them up. And cut them to ten and a half inches. Now something to keep in mind when you're laying out your pick pattern, the bottom of the bag is four inches deep. So that's two inches from the bottom of this piece and it's two inches from the bottom of this piece. They are going to go underneath the bag. And then on this side, on either side, you're going to lose two inches from the front. If you are trying to get, we call it fussy cutting, um, where you want something specific. So like this wine bottle turned out to be almost exactly right in the middle of the bag, which is kind of cool. And this one did, but it's a little off to the side. This one is going to go around the side of the bag because you're going to lose a quarter of an inch for your seam and two inches for your box, so to speak. But it's going to be all rounded and it's not going to be really t We're not using interfacing. We're using fusible fleece, but we're not using any interfacing. And I may change my mind on that for the next one. But for this one, I'm not using that. All right, so the last thing I need is two pieces that are two and three quarters inches wide for the interfacing. So this has, the fabric is on the outside. And then the inside, the top part of the inside is also the same exterior fabric. So I need two pieces that are going to be two and three quarters inches wide that are going to attach to our um, lining fabric. So since we have two pieces that are on the inside and two pieces that are on the outside, I do want to look at these and see which ones have more detail to them. This one I'm not as crazy about. I've got the almost exact same thing on this fabric. So I'm going to pull that one down. And 
these two are going to be visible on the exterior of the bag and these two are going to be the interior facing of the bag. Alright, so the last piece we need from the exterior fabric is our bias tape. And they say to cut the bias tape at an angle, at a 45 degree angle. I am trying to get as much usable fabric out of this as I can, so I do not want to do that. Um, I am instead going to cut it to length so that some of it stays, so I have a little bit of fabric left down here to use on my next bag. But it needs to be 23 inches long. So I am cutting it 23 inches long. I'm actually using the markers on my table mat, which I don't usually do. But I'm going to go ahead and do that because I just want to make sure. And then so I have this little bit of 10 and a half inch fabric left. We'll have to see how much I can get out of it. And this is actually going to give me um, 11, 3, 6, 9, 6. This will give me 6 of my bias strips. Because they're 23 inches long by 1 and a half inches wide. I'm just going to cut one right now. And then I'll set that down there. And we have our bias tape. And our bias tape is going to go around the top of our bag. I did not have an issue not cutting it on the bias with my last bag, so that's why I'm not cutting it on the bias this time. All right. Lining fabric. Hmm. That needs four pieces. Let's go with that one first. Okay, so here's our lining fabric, and it is, like I said, standard Kona cotton. So it is 42 to 45 inches in length, and this one happens to be without the salvage, 21 and a half, so 42, 43 inches. This one happens to be 43 inches, not including the salvage. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it, or tear it, at and I need 11 inches tall. Yes, I do. Why don't I do the wide? I'm going to cut, tear it at 8 and do that one first and go from there. This fabric is non-directional, which means I can cut it whichever way I want. They say wide and tall. It doesn't matter because this fabric has no pattern to it, so it's not visibly, you're not going to see it anywhere. Now comes the fun part, because I told her she could sit anywhere she wants, and now I have to move her. All 
All right, big girl. Oops. I hate to tell you this, but you gotta go. Ugh. There you go, sweet girl. And we are going to press this fabric on the torn edge. And I will show you up close why. Let me move you over here because we're going to need you over here so we can discuss salvage. Right, so pressing, but I'm lining up the fabric edge that I tore, not the fabric edge that was cut by whoever cut it, but by the by the edge that's torn, making sure that all of the, so some of this is the threads are pulling out. So you're going to pull out the threads that are being challenging and then match up the other threads because that means you're going to be perfectly on grain. You definitely want to do this with fabric you're using for clothing um, and it works nicely for quilting too because that way you get I'm just sort of pressing this right now just to get our wrinkled ed or torn edges unwrinkled um, if you've ever had a shirt where you put it on and all day long you're you're trying to twist it because it, it won't it, it like turns on you and even just a little bit, so all day you're just sort of, that's not sitting right. That means that it was not cut on the grain. The pattern was cut without taking grain into account. And it does the same thing when hanging as the interior lining of a bag. You'd constantly be pushing at it in the bag going, why is this not sitting right? Why does it keep turning? Why isn't the corner? So you want to make sure that you get your fabric on grain whenever you're sewing. I do it no matter what I'm making. Um, I say that. There have been times where I haven't. Um, very few. Uh, If you're using a really, really, really small amount of fabric, like I said, for this piece here, this is the actual, this is the lining. This is the outside lining. Well, I should say the main lining, the front and back lining of the bag. Um, it's not just the piece that goes in the middle that keeps them from bumping into each other. This is the official lining. Pressed it flat. Now, like I said, line up the pieces of thread from where you tore the fabric. And I have to say, I'm fairly impressed with this. Their fabric was obviously on their bolt reasonably well, but just not quite right. So here we go. All right, so our fabric is lined up. We, there's a piece of thread at the very top and a piece of thread at the very top, and we line those threads up on there. And we made sure it was straight. And if you look at the bottom, they are not, it was not cut completely straight. 
Now this is like 10,000 times better than I've seen it from other locations. So this was actually a decent cut. There are times when this piece, this top piece, would be all the way over here. I've seen it that, like a three to four inch gap before. Um, so just, just for your sanity later on, make sure you do it that way. Okay, how wide did I cut this? I cut this seven and a half inch, I cut it eight inches wide. And I need it to be eight, seven and a half by 14 for the zipper pocket lining. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut it. I forgot, I need to cut it the, to width. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the ragged edge. Line up on the fold. And that got rid of the ragged edge. And now we need it to be seven and a half inches wide. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my long ruler here, and then we're going to adjust everything, and seven and a half inches, and hopefully we get the right, there we go. So we line up seven and a half on the cut edge, and the reason I put this ruler on first was because I knew we were going to be really close to the edge here. Okay, so we are seven and a half inches wide. Excellent. Why is my watch keep vibrating? Ah. All right, sorry about that. Neighbor had brain cancer surgery over yesterday, so the announcement just came out that all is right with the world. Okay, so now let us get it 14 inches tall. So trim off the edge, line up on the bottom, line up on the top. You want to get it as square as you can. I'm too close to the bias here. You need to shift it a little bit. And there we go. We're going to do our two ruler system again. 14 inches tall. And you're not going to be able to see any of that. Can you stay up? Why will you not stay up? Let's see. There we go. Okay, 14 inches. All right, and this is going to be the pocket of the bag. Now, let's see, I need two pieces that are four inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. That's not going to work. Normally, 
normally I cut the widest piece first and go from there. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to organize these. I'm having no luck with it. Let's see. Let's do 11 inches tall. Let me get this out of the way first. Let's go back to here. Let me get this uh, seam I pressed to keep everything straight out of here. It's the only problem with folding and, and pressing that way. Then you have to get it back out. Otherwise your pieces just don't come out right. I can't think of any really good way to lay this out so I'm not wasting some of the fabric. two. I need four of these. Oh, they need to be narrower. I forgot. Oh, camera fell. Okay. I'm not using you right now anyway, so you rest it over there. 11 inches wide or tall by five and a quarter inches. What's the last one there? Four inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. I don't think this is eight and a half inches. No, it's seven. Okay. Now I have scraps and I still need more pieces. Let's see. Five and a quarter. I'm going to go five and a quarter inches this time. five and a half, so I have room to trim off the torn edges. Just to get it cut to the correct width, we need to press it. We need to get it to five and a quarter.
this off our sides. Just make sure all of the wrinkles are out. but not least one more time so we get the right width and back here to trim it I am using the smallest ruler I can right now because that way the ruler doesn't slip when I'm cutting. But I'm going to need to use the wider ruler because that ruler is not big enough to cut five and a quarter inches. Now I need two more pieces that are 11 inches long. This is a very busy conversation that they're having. I mean, I get it. I, don't get me wrong. It's wonderful that the surgery went well. It's just I should probably take my watch off if they're going to keep chatting. And 11. That's almost exactly on the fold. Which actually makes sense when I think about it. Because I said it was 21 and a half inches. And I need... Well, no. It's a little bit... Anyway. Okay, let me press this down on the bottom just a little bit because that's where the fold was. So those are all going to go that way inside the bag. Um, there's going to be down the middle is where the center divider is going to be which is what the next two pieces I need. Next two pieces need to be four inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. Please tell me this is more than six. Eight. Yeah, that's perfect. Excellent. Okay. So this needs to be, first I'm going to cut off this raggedy end. It's a little folded because of the where I folded it and pressed it. Just going to get that out of the way. And now I need it to be eight and a half inches. And actually, this ruler is wide enough. 
I should have just been doing this to begin with. Eight and a half inches. There. to be four inches wide. Line everybody up. Like I said, these are going to be the center divider that's padded. It's going to get padded with fusible fleece. All right, let's see. Let's get you guys out of the way for a minute. The next thing I need is from the webbing two handles that are 23 inches long. So, like I said, I ordered two five inch or five yard pieces of webbing. So let's get the extra stuff over here. It doesn't look very straight. And now 23 inches. Yes, I could use my ruler and my rotary cutter. There's no reason I couldn't. I just didn't. Are you going to stick up there or are you going to fall? It's probably going to fall, but we'll try. In my house, we always put the rubber bands back on things because otherwise kitty cats play with them and rubber bands are bad for kitty cats. So, rubber band goes right back on the webbing. Next thing on my cut list is the leather. certain if my rotary cutter can get through that many layers of leather, but let me try. That is actually a fairly decent straight edge.
excellent. So I need two pieces that are one inch wide, which these are now, and 12 inches long. under the ruler. I have a second kitty cat, oh excuse me, that just came wandering in. Probably looking for the first kitty cat. She will not jump up here while I'm working. She's investigating the box that I moved the big one in earlier. All right, there's a 12 inch piece. And a second 12 inch piece. here for later use. Hi Talia. Those are going to go together there. All right. All my hardware is still sitting up here, but I do need to cut the zipper to length. Feet and snap out of the way. Now you're probably wondering, the fusible fleece, where does that come in? So the fusible fleece comes in after we assemble, not that one, these three pieces and these two pieces. So we do know what that piece is going to be, but the height and width on these are to be determined, but I will be writing them down so that I know that when I make the next one and I can cut them in advance. All right, but the zipper I need a one inch by four and a half inch. It does say metal zipper and mine are plastic, but so one inch by four inch. I think we're one inch by four inch. Well, I know we're one, I think we're one inch. I know we're, yes, we are one inches. I am using a number three zipper, um, which is smaller than the number five, which is typical in a bag. Uh, I like the way the smaller zipper looks on the smaller bags. I have another bag, a mini bag that I make, and I really just like the way the smaller zippers look, even though it's not as common. And I am cutting my zipper to five inches, even though it calls for a four and a half inch zipper, because uh, since I'm using zipper tape, I am going to need to attach the zipper pull to the zipper tape. And let's see, move you around here, see if that'll work. All right, so once upon a time, I had the entire set of this. I actually paid to get a setting a month while I was younger, and they sent me a setting a month. This is the only one left. I don't know what happened to all the rest of them. And we have completely different flatware now. But anyway, so this is my zipper tool. This is my zipper pull. And just like the zipper tape comes in different sizes, obviously the zipper pulls do also. So this is a number three size zipper pull, which means it's smaller. Do I have a bigger one right here that I can show you? Um, I thought I did. Where did it go? Really? I hear them. Ah, there they are. I knew they were right here. 
No, not that one. This one. That's what I get for having stuff sitting there. Okay. So this is a number five zipper pull. And this is a number three zipper pull. So the tape width, the area across is the same, but the teeth, oops, too far up, but the teeth are wider on a number five and they're narrower on a number three. So that's why, like I said, I like the number three for bags like this because they're smaller and the zipper is a really short zipper. So I don't want to use anything big. Okay. Zipper gadget. I'm going to slide this onto the fork. And you can buy these things that are gadgets. Um, not going up where the zipper is going to go. Oops, this way. Just holding on to the pull. And since we're upside down, this is the right side of the zipper tape. This is the wrong side of the zipper tape. See how can, you can barely see the teeth there? You're going to open up your zipper tape a little bit. And now comes the fun part. Sometimes it takes me a minute, sometimes it takes me 20. Hopefully today is not a 20 minute day. Even. Come on. Oh, come on. We're almost there. No, oh, you didn't catch. They both went in, but they didn't catch on each other. I've never used this particular zipper pull on this tape before. It was brand new because, like I said, I liked, with the fabric I got, I really wanted to get a antique brass look going. And this does not want to work. That's not going to make me happy. Open. Close. Or you're not closing. Oh, no. Oh, that's not going to make me happy at all. All right, so this zipper pull is not going to work. Where did the ones that came with it go? I'll put them right back here. All right. I'm wondering if that isn't a number four zipper pull instead, and it's just marked was just marked wrong. Now that I'm looking at this, this does look smaller. All right, let's see. Please don't take forever. So then I'll have to not do this on camera. Alright, I'm going to have to worry about that later. Do camera, because there's no reason for you all to sit there and watch me suffer with that. 
when it's just going to be difficult. So they will be. It will be put together by the time you see it next. Because we have about a half hour left, and I really would like to get to some sewing today. All right. First thing we do is we put our leather on our straps. So, leather straps. And what it suggests I do is figure out where the middle of my leather is. I'm lining it up. So there, 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 there it is. There's my middle. And do the same thing to the second one. And then it tells me to do the same thing with my straps. Now the straps can have pins in them. The leather cannot. If you put pins in your leather, you're going to get holes and you're never going to get rid of them. So you don't want to do that. the middle of my handle. And the middle of my second handle. Wonderful. To make this kind of pretty, we're going to make a point on either end. So the first thing I want to do is draw in a half an inch on each side. And this marker is spe or this pen is special. It's a Frixon and it will go away with heat. It says in the directions to use a water-soluble pen, and I'm not certain why. I know that leather and heat don't necessarily completely get along, but we should be okay. And then it says to measure halfway across, which this case is also a half an inch. and then join up the points. So from here to here. And from there to there. Probably be using a smaller ruler. But, alright. So now we're going to cut and we have a point. So it's a little decorative.
And we're going to do the same thing on this piece. Voila. Pretty stuff. Okay. Now we're going to go over to the machine and sew these onto our straps. our white sew all thread. And put our brown on. I could try and use a burgundy. I don't think I have a burgundy, but I could have ordered one. Um, but again, I like the idea that the thread is going to be an accent color against the cream of the exterior fabric and this burgundy that's going to be my leather fabric. And the burgundy is an accent for all the burgundy in the bottles that are on the canvas exterior fabric. All right, this needle has been used quite a bit, so we're going to throw that out. And actually for this first Step, I'm going to see if I have a leather needle. I do have a leather needle. Now, technically, it's just a universal 90, which, or it's the same size, it is a 90. Um, and I am going to be using a universal 90 on the rest of the bag. But for this first, I am going to use a leather needle, which the eye is different. Uh, it doesn't show me a picture on here. Um, and that gives it the ability to just get through the leather. It's not only the fact that it's a 90, it's the, it's the eye is shaped differently. And sadly, there's no way for me to show you that. You are welcome to go onto the internet and look around out there and see what they have to say about the different types of needles because they are going to tell you the difference in the eye of the needle. And like I said, I don't have a microscope to be able to show it to you, so, or a magnifying glass or whatever else I might need. So you're just going to have to trust me that the leather needle is what I want to use right now, but, and it's also a 90. It's, it's not any bigger than the other one. All right, the other thing I'm going to use is I am using my top stitch foot and my top stitch stitch. My machine allows me to save favorites. And so I have a favorite stitch where it moves my needle over to the left a little bit and makes my stitch length longer. And that way I have what I consider to be a perfect top stitch. Now we need to center up our leather. 
So centering up the leather with our pin. Come on. There we go. And you want to be as careful as possible, but not uh, you don't want to get absolutely ridiculous. It's just going to give you a headache. I'm going to use at least two clips, probably more. Get the pin out of the way because the pin is just causing the belting to bubble funny and you don't want that because otherwise your stitches are going to come out wrong. You want everybody flat and straight. And you want it so you've got just a little bit of fabric of the belting on either side of the leather. Now we've got things lined up. Okay, the reason I like the top stitch foot is because the toe on this side sits lower than the toe on this side. And boy, that's blurry. Can I make you focus a little bit better on the foot? Nope, you're still going to focus on the machine. So, Top stitch foot just makes top stitching easier. It is not a mandatory item at all. It just makes life a little bit easier. Because it allows you to line up and follow where you want to stitch. Ooh. That didn't sound good. Why are we being fussy already? Let me see. Is it something with the bobbin or is it because it's mad at the fabric? two pieces of fabric here. How does it sound? It sounds just fine and dandy. How did we stitch? We stitched. Now yeah, we got knotted at the beginning. Okay, so we're having knotting issues. Let's get this off. Okay, we're not quite far enough over, so let's move you, that's as far as you go. All right, try again. Just wanted to be fussy for just starting, or it was too close to the edge of the leather, and that could have been what it was too. I had to move this needle over a little bit. This is not a really thick leather, so it's it's a nice it's nice to use on a on a home machine. All right, so now we're coming to the point, and we want to make it look pretty. Slow down, go to the point. Um, I don't think that's enough. Uh, yeah, I guess it is. Thank you. 
And now it's sewn on. Can't see it very well on that camera. I'll take you over to the other camera and see if we can get it a better view. And we get after we're done with the second handle. Okay, so again, line up. Center it as best you can. Between the edges. And it's too close to that side. It needs to be further over. Leather is now on the handles. Let's see if I can get you to see that prettier. Oops. So the brown top stitch on the burgundy fabric doesn't stand out too much. So it, it's not like it's wee pop which a, like a white wood but it's got a little bit of color so that it blends in the burgundy to the brown which of course the burgundy then blends in with our fabric which you can't tell from the distance that it is so that did absolutely no good but trust me that handle's gonna stay are we going to fall? They're not going to stay, I don't think. Nah. They're not going to stay, so we're not going to bother. 
we'll just set them up there out of the way. Okay. Attach the base panel to the middle panels, front and back, and press top stitch along the seam narrowly, image four. There's a picture on the book. Well, it's not a book pattern. Okay. And this is where I messed up last time. Because I didn't keep these in order. I, I matched up the wrong pieces to the wrong places. So my pocket is down here instead of up here. So we're going to get it right this time. Move you back out of the way. There we go. So we're going to do the middle to the bottom. Middle panels to the bottom panels, front and back. Now you can sort of see, well, maybe not from there, but my fabric is starting to fray. Take off my top stitch, put foot, put on my quarter inch foot, and thread the machine. Remove the leather needle. I do not need my leather needle anymore. Standard Universal 90. Um, I am using the 90 because of the canvas fabric. If you would prefer to use an 80, you can. The 80, the canvas will work just fine with a Universal 80. I just happen to have 90s, so I use them when I can. Otherwise, they'd be sitting here forever. And it set a quarter inch seam throughout the pattern. If you are new or are so inclined, you can pin or clip these fat pieces of fabric together. You want to match up the seams. And if you don't have a quarter inch piecing foot, just make sure mark where it's going to be on your machine. You can use a gadget such as this magnetic doohickey. Um, I have a foot that tells me where I'm going. Make sure you keep everybody straight. heard the ruckus, the kitty cat has returned and has decided she wants to play. 
in the box from earlier. So there was a little bit of noise going, a little rucks. She's attacking her tail while in the box. Or attacking the box, I'm not certain which. Either way, she's bouncing around a lot in the box. And because I'm not certain where the microphones are working today, I'm not certain which camera's picking up what. And you might hear a lot of ruckus from her. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to top stitch to the bottom piece. It actually doesn't specifically tell me which way to, to top stitch, but it shows me in the picture, and to me, it should be towards the bottom. So we need to press our fabric so that both seams are to the bottom panel, which is the smaller panel of the two. And that way, my iron, if it's up too long, stops heating. That way it doesn't, you know, burn down your house. And it's been a while since we used it, so it, it turned off. Um, so I'm pressing this way. So just like I sewed it. I'm pressing this way first. That warms up all of the threads and makes everything a little bit looser so that it work so when you fold over the fabric and press it, it, it just it's sharper. It's everybody's a little loose and ready for the party. And there she went again. Yes, that was a very loud thud as she pushed the box against something. Counter. Door. Not certain what it was. Because I've got the, the boxes sitting in the doorway pretty much. All right. Now we're going to press it down. there so that we can stitch it and now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So at this point one is front one is back doesn't really matter which one's which. There's a lot more people on that thread than I thought there were. So, one piece is front, one piece is back. Um, it's a personal preference as to which is front and which is back. And you're going to be putting a pocket in. I consider the side with the pocket to be the front. It's the way I carry it. Well, the one that I have. You can consider that the back if you want, if you want to carry it closer to your body. It's not going to be over the shoulder bag. It is a bag that you carry in your hand, so either on your wrist or if you're carrying it next to you or whatever. Um, I tend to prefer to not have my... I like to have the zipper on the outside. It gives it a little texture, otherwise everything looks bland. And I believe this is the piece I'm going to use as the center, or as the front. Because there's a nice big white area right here where I can put the zipper. Um, I don't remember how big of a square we're, or a rectangle we're going to make, and we're not going to do it today. We're going to finish this, and then we'll do it next time. But that's where I'm planning on putting it. Let's get over here so we can get this done in today's episode, part, whatever. All right, back we go to our top stitch foot. 
And I do a lot of back and forth between the top stitch foot and the other feet during bags because there's I don't, there's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of top stitching. Okay, so now we're going to top stitch. And now we have the middle and the bottom, and we have our top stitch. And you'll see that the seam has now been stitched twice. It, has, it was stitched together, and then it has a top stitch on it. That gives you a nice, sturdy seam. And we are going to be carrying bottles in these, so we want some strength to them. Um, you can also see that it's fraying a lot, just as I mentioned. So you have to be careful with your fabrics. You don't want to get them too messed up. Okay, so in part two, fingers crossed we can get it done. It's going to be really close, so I'm going to try and not gab as much. Um, first thing we are going to do is we're going to put in our pocket, which goes in, uh, I can't think of what they call it, how the, is there a term for it? Zipper po po box pocket, there's a free blog on how to do it, lots of photos to help, you can not all of this into a pattern. Oh, okay. So instead of giving you the details of how to put the, the zipper box pocket in, they give you the directions on how to find the location to see the video for it. Um, it's something I've done a lot. It's a very common way to put in a pocket. I'm never happy with the way they come out ever. Um, I always do something that's just a little bit wrong that I see. No one else sees it. It's just me. Um, but it always does. It always works out that way for me. Um, and I've got to get the zipper pull onto the zipper. So that's a whole different issue. Um, but we will be putting the zipper in first. So the hardest part of this bag is the first thing we are going to do in part two. Um, the rest of it is fairly straightforward. Um, we put on straps, we put the top thing on. It is cool that instead of doing a flip inside out bag, we put the binding on it. That's kind of a neat way of doing it. Um, and you'll see what I mean when we get to that point. But other than that, it is a typical squared box bag and can be, all of the techniques we're doing for this pattern can be adjusted for other things. So, all right, well, you all have a great day. I will see you next time. Don't forget to thumbs up, like, subscribe, follow, remind, whatever needs to be done so that you can come see me again. Um, we will be doing different bags. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some more quilting. I'm gonna do some, get. More, do some more quilting again. Um, I've tried knitting, but 
for some reason I've had some issues with the way that's come out so I've got to figure out how to make that work but we're gonna finish this bag up in part two and again check me out I've got lots of playlists where you can go and see lots of my live videos I mess up all the time so you can see what you can do wrong and right